I'm John Diarum with Cokie Valley Sword Group. Today we're going over solo training. Now, solo training is uh, really a very important aspect of any kind of martial work. Um, while it is absolutely true that you cannot learn to fight by training by yourself alone, um, that you know, at best you can get maybe ten percent of the skills that are necessary. Um, if you're just some kind of super prodigy, the reality is you need people, you need uh, something to interact on, something to interact on you, and something to contest your interactions uh, to be able to really progress and un understand this work deeply. Uh, but there are circumstances and there are times when working with a training partner is simply not an option. Uh, or you can use solo training as a, an additional means of practice uh, to complement your partner training. And that is, the latter is mostly what we're going to focus on, right? <clears throat> uh, if you are one of these people that, you know, you, you have this passion for sword work, and, but you just can't find anybody who's willing to work with you, uh, put out flyers at your local college. Uh, Go online, look for uh, internet groups that practice what you practice or practice something similar or practice something completely different but in the same field. Uh, you know, you should have, if you're doing Japanese work, you should have no problem going to a local HEMA club and playing with them. They will be more than happy in most cases to have uh, another perspective and another person to work with. Um, but, uh, like I said, our focus is going to be on using solo practice as a supplement for paired practice. And so, if paired practice is so great, then why, why do we want to train by ourselves sometimes? Well, it's simple, right? When we practice with other people, our focus is on how we're interacting with them and how that interaction manipulates them. We're also looking at how their actions and manipulations towards us affect us, right? And this studying the, the interplay between you and Deki, you and the opponent, is uh, in incredibly important. But in order to do that in a safe way, we have to uh, make contrivances. We have to manipulate things. Uh, we have to manipulate distance, spacing, aggression level to a degree, uh, target choice, sort of on and on and on. When we train by ourselves, especially when that training is informed by uh, the lessons of training with a partner, we can uh, do things that would otherwise be unsafe or ill-advised. So for this, I will be primarily using a little wakizashi as a Hyoho style, nice and thin, because uh, I don't want to upset my upstairs neighbors <laughs> or my maintenance man. Now, normally, when we perform the kata, I'll be taking short steps so I fit in frame. We go, we take our step. One, two, three, we make our pause. We slip, we thrust, we push. Come up, and maotoku, right? On, and back on. This is really good. It teaches us control, where to place, how to time. All this minutia that we need to to understand, because it's there for a reason. When, for myself, would I convert these into single person, sort of kata-like things, I'll do the same kind of work, with no pause, and with much more aggressive stepping, especially during the attacking phase. So, uh, I get my position right, right? I get that tension in my thighs, tension in my diaphragm, I get my lean on, and I really try to envision uh, taking an opponent right coming at me, and I try and make them as as, as uh, uncomfortable to my psyche as possible, right? Just mm, just mm, the antithesis of everything that I uh, find to be safe and comforting, right? I'll go, they'll start to move. I'll take small steps again just for the demonstration, and then right, and I'll push it. 
right? So just from the thrust, ba ba, right? And really drive them, right? Uh, with no regard uh, for their safety, for their person, for the decorum of your class. Just a boom, 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 and push because those things are here because you're training by yourself. What's nice about this is tension and fear and excitement tend to corrupt our work, right? They, they, they corrupt our positions, corrupt our body, corrupt our technical work, right? This is one way, a uh, very sort of risk-free kind of way almost, of getting used to reining yourself in even when you're feeling this uh, excitement. So the tendency in the beginning is to really sort of uh, reach with your shoulders, reach with your body, reach with everything, and you start leaving stuff behind, right? Now, there is at least one branch style of Yoho that I know that does their sort of uh, their, their, their sasen position with this sort of forward lean position, long leg. Um, I don't know their oral tradition. I don't know why they do it. I don't know if there's some special way they do it. But it is not something that I do. And the reason it's not is because an enormous part of Kyoho is being able to rapidly adjust to your partner and the work that they do, right? To be able to shift out of what you're doing, to let go with both hands, and change your work to adjust to the situation. The more extreme your position becomes, the slower your transitions become as you have to drag yourself back up towards some central axis to move on. You can think of it like uh, an axle is at the center of a wheel, right? And so it spins, and if you just spin it in the air, it's pretty stable. If you take that axle and sort of asymmetrically uh, put it closer to an edge, now the rotation becomes uh, irregular, more elliptical. And you end up with something that is much less stable and takes more time to make its rotation. So, again, don't know their method, don't know their oral tradition. I'm not uh, dogging on them. I'm just saying, for us and our work, keep yourself controlled, in position, right? A little bit of shoulder lean is fine, but the moment this shoulder starts to get in line with the knee, I have pulled my center of balance to like the outer third of my body, and this should be considered the wall, right? They, they like, do not pass this line even if you really, really, really want to. So, and you can do, obviously, any of the kata in this way, in this sort of just push it, drive it, bah, bah, bah. I tend to put a lot of emphasis on uh, the follow-up thrusts, right? So like in Sasen, we thrust, and then we have this nice gentle push. That push, thrust, thrust, right? Also, boom, thrust, right? You're, you're driving in and you're not waiting for them to be ready. You're not waiting for your opponent to go, oh, yes, I have assumed position, I have stepped back, and now I'm in ready for you to push me, right? We can just drive and really start to feel the right? The, the linkage, do, 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 right? Do, 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 between the motions, and that's, uh, Pretty important, I think. Now, of course, 
using just your short sword, people will start to feel like, oh yeah, I'm doing it and it's it's so great. I could be some like crazy machete fighter or, 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 or knife guy or whatever. But I want to do swords, right? I don't want to train swords and yeah, I don't want to hit my ceiling. But what can I do? That's easy. Okay. You work on the ground. So while our style um, outside of a demonstration that I think it was Imai Soke did, uh, where he showed some of the jujitsu he was working on, we don't have, uh, so what it was, we don't have kneeling technique as such, but you can still uh, use it for the purposes of, let's say, suburi, right? So I come up, I can work from here, and cut. And cut. And cut. And cut. And I can really start to um, uh, study my cut in the same way that I could do if I was standing. Um, but by removing half of it, by removing the body work of it, you're able to look really specifically at what your arms are doing. Um, that being said, if you're familiar with Suwariwaza, you can still do the stepping, right? And it's, it's no different. Um, I like doing the work near the ground because the ground is really informative. A lot of people, especially when they start to get tired when they're doing super, I'm going to try not to hit my ceiling, <laughs> right? Their cuts become like this, right? And they just, I'm exhausted. Let this just end, right? This is no good. This is good. This is no good. This is good, right? Because ground layer is down at your knees. If you get lazy, boom, you hit the floor and you go, oh, as lazy. Because your legs are out in front of you, if you try and choke, you're, you're landing right in your lap and you feel right away, hmm, this isn't good. So it really encourages you to stretch your cuts, to make them long, to keep them in the game, right? If I'm here and I cut, right, you see all of this space that you can work on. And while it's true, we can work right up into Kiriyake, right up in the sort of uh, Kisaki Gaishi motion that we're, we're so uh, familiar with. It's only if they give us time, right? If the situation gives us time, or if their negligence gives us time. If they're working uh, Tainosen, right? They're going to take us, right? And then they're right into our center line. In contrast, boom, we pop in. And now we're in the center line. And yeah, they may still try and work there. Pop, pop. Pop, pop. Pop, pop. But we are, right? We're right on that central axis, that, that axle of the car, right? Second parry, right? We can, first parry, on and on. We can work directly to protect ourselves. So it's a much better position. It's also this position that lets us attack uh, consecutively right away with the thrust in that half beat. Right, so if I come down here, cut through, and I want to thrust, I've got to lift my sword to thrust it. Now, that might, not, that might not seem like a lot of time, but it is. It's a lot of time, and it's a lot of motion, right? It's a lot of space for them to see it. In contrast, There's almost no time, right? And 
because the sword is moving on an axis that is almost identical to their line of sight, if you're doing your Judon well, it becomes very hard. Because rather than seeing, you know, 33 and a half inch of blade or whatever your length is, coming up and moving through spaces. So they're seeing, you know, two square inches max moving front to back on them in the way that their eye is weak in terms of depth perception. So it's a, it is a big difference. And unfortunately, because of safety, we, we with the Fukuro Shinai, when you start working with it, um, it's not such an issue, though people are typically pretty revel, uh, reticent to stab their partners in the face with Fukuro Shinai and instead go for the belly or things where, like, it's still hard to see, but because you've got that sight line on the Mune, it's still, it's nothing compared. <laughs> nothing compared to just directly thrusting on them after a cut. Um, training by yourself, these sort of solo variations that are kind of like this, let you think about how motions are tied together, right? Let's say uh, we want to do something more complicated than the Sasen thrust with Mini, or also to a thrust with Mini. Maybe we want to link several motions, right? Hey, we saw sin, but we imagine that they parried off the side. Maybe they're doing a, maybe they've stepped to our inside, to our left, and they're doing a first parry style hasuke, oh, with the idea of coming here, oh, I break into ukenagashi. And I do it from this position where, oh, there's haritsuke, well, <laughs> ukenagashi to haritsuke. But you see where I'm going with it, right? You can build in the connectivity between the individual concepts of the technical work, right? And it's great <laughs> because it lets you look at a lot of things. Um, another area that it can really start to show you is how are you breathing, right? When you're working with the Fukuro Shinai, and you're working with a partner, and you're like, bah, 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 when you're sweating afterwards, you're feeling exhausted, you're like, yeah, I'm sweating, I'm exhausted, I use my muscles so much, I'm just like, whoa! Maybe not. Maybe what you were doing is poorly moderating your breath, right? Because when we look at the, the typical length of sword fights, it's not that a person's muscles tire out. It's that they run out of oxygen, right? That's what that whole fatigue feeling and sensation is. That's that, I just can't anymore, <clears throat> right? And your lack of oxygen has almost nothing to do with your partner, right? If they've got good semi, they know how to hit you in your breathing rhythm. They, they can work some really irritating high level stuff, then yeah, you know, they can, all but uh, make you pass out. But, uh, assuming you're not paying attention, you're getting caught in their, caught in their uh, drunkenness, caught in their rhythm, kind of. But for most people, most situations, it's because they're not moderating their breath. They start, and they go, now's the time. And they hold their breath, and they hold their breath, and they push, and they push, and they start breathing somewhere around here. Right? Don't be that guy. Be the guy that breathes all the way through. And ideally, <clears throat> you don't want to breathe, just like you don't want to. Move your sword and your body together. You don't want to move your breath and your body together. Most of the time, just as most of the time the body leads and the sword follows, most of the time the breath leads. And the body follows. 
right? Um, you will find times where that's simply inconvenient. And you have to move real quick and breathe afterwards and sort of have time between your last action and the action that's forthcoming. But by and large, breathe, <laughs> keep breathing, right? Your muscles are gluttons for oxygen. And the more you employ them and the more that you tense them, the more oxygen that they're pulling from your blood and the more exhausted you'll begin to feel. Keep your breath up. And go with it, right? Uh, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about how I think you should breathe. Um, instead, I think it's more important that you just really focus on breathing. <laughs> Um, I think that is probably good enough. I think that gives you guys enough of an idea that you can kind of go from here. So uh, we'll leave it off there. Uh, if you guys have questions, just leave it uh, down in the comments or send me an email. I'll get it to you. Uh, as always, if you want to understand this work, you have to pick up a sword and go train.